Rockets! Hi! Hi you here! You've probably heard a lot about space and rockets by now, but you probably haven't got a good visual of what it looks like inside a rocket yet. I mean, they just look like big tubes with engines, right? Well, that's what we're gonna fix today. I might need a volunteer. So the rocket is made of several key parts. First you start off with the engines at the bottom, so it's this guy's feet. Then you have the first stage, which is the largest part of the rocket. That's this guy's legs and his belly. Then you have the second stage, which is just another smaller rocket on top of your rocket, which is his shoulders and his arms right here. And then finally you have your payload, either a crewed vessel, which has people inside, or like a satellite if you're lifting a satellite. If it's a satellite, you have like a payload ferry, which is in two halves that break away in space. But I'm not going to break this guy's head open because that's kind of bad. So to start with, booster stages. A rocket can have as many stages as you want, but they usually have two to three. Each stage of a rocket works the same, but they get smaller and have less thrust the higher up the rocket you go. A booster, named as such because of how it boosts, are made out of two big propellant tanks. These tanks aren't inside the rocket, they literally are the rocket. When you're looking at the rocket, that's what you're looking at. But why are there two? There's two because one is for fuel and the other is for oxidizer. If you're going somewhere where there's no oxygen, you need to bring your own source of oxygen with you. This is actually what gives rocket engines their name, otherwise they'd just be like engines inside of planes. Between the propellant tanks is a wall called a bulkhead that separates the two. You really have to separate them, otherwise you're gonna have a bad day. In the old days, there used to be two walls where the tanks met, but nowadays we can make it with just one, which means we can save on weight and also cram more fuel in. Through this bulkhead is a big tube which allows the propellant to pass from the top tank through the bottom tank to get to the engines, where both propellants mix and get burned to create thrust. Alongside the propellant tanks, and sometimes inside of them, are little bottles of helium which get released into the, the tanks to maintain pressure. The walls of the propellant tanks are actually really thin. They get their strength from all the internal pressure, the same way a soda can does. If you open a soda can and let the pressure out, suddenly we're able to crush it or bend it. Now, a lot of the time, super cold liquid oxygen is used as the oxidizer, and every, over time that heats up and turns into gas. And when it does that, it increases the pressure of the tank so you need to vent it every now and then. So to keep the pressure correct, they let that gas out using valves, which is why you see rockets vaping on the launch pad from time to time. Oh, oh. Beautiful. When do I get paid? <laughs> when you have more than 4,000 hours of watch time. Now on the side of the rocket are these things called raceways. They're used for transferring power and data between the two ends of the rocket, as well as helium, and sometimes even propellants in some cases. Now for some rocket upper stages, there are these little solid rocket motors on the side that start up in space before the engine starts. These are called ullage motors, and what they do is they provide a little bit of acceleration, kind of like artificial gravity, get all of the propellants to settle at the bottom of their tanks because usually they're just kind of floating around. Modern rockets tend to not use these anymore. They either have special stuff inside the fuel tanks or a special engine startup sequence to provide the same effect. Now as the first stage finishes its job, it decouples from the rocket and the next stage starts up. The Saturn V moon rocket would use explosive charges that it would detonate to detonate the building sized stages. But then again, NASA didn't really care about getting those stages back in one piece. Modern rockets like the Falcon 9, the Heavy Boy, and the Small Boy use pneumatic actuators to sort of push the stages apart. They're pushes that are operated by gas pressure. The fairing is the rocket's nose cone, and it uses this to protect its payload that it's carrying to space. It looks like a big egg, which is important because eggs are important. It makes the front of the rocket more aerodynamic, while also protecting the probe inside. And once it's in space, it separates into two halves to save on weight because it's not needed anymore in space. These tend to be made out of carbon composite and are usually really tricky and expensive to manufacture. So ideally, you'd want to catch them out of the air with a net as they fall or something like that, which is exactly what SpaceX is trying to do, because of course SpaceX is trying to do that. Now let's do a brief section on stability. You might think having a low center of mass is a good thing, but actually having a high center of mass is much better. You're controlling the rocket from down here with the engines, that's how you change its direction. And having a high center of mass means it's much easier for me to balance this pole, because if it was right down here, the whole thing would just flip over. However, as the rocket's coming into land, its fuel tanks are empty, so its center of mass is right at the bottom where all the engines are, because the engines are heavy. 
But that's actually what you want. If the booster then deploys fins at the top, its aerodynamic stability becomes just like those things people throw around and hurt each other with in parks. The last thing is the flight termination system, which is used in the event that the rocket veers off course in a way that it can't correct from. It explodes. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can better understand what's going on inside of rockets now. Do me a subscribe and a bell for more space delivered fresh and warm to your notification thingy. I also have a Patreon now. Until next time, this has been Hayu. Bye!